Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Nellis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we have another urology topic. In previous videos in this lab's playlist, we talked about urine chloride, urine potassium, urine osmolality, urine osmolar gap, urine leukocyte estrays, and urine nitrites test. We also covered more topics in urinalysis, such as urine ketone bodies, microscopic examination of the urine, red blood cells in the urine, white blood cells in the urine, pus in the urine, and even urine electrophoresis. Today, let's talk about renal biopsy or kidney biopsy. If you take a sample from my kidney while I'm alive, it's called biopsy. Bio means life. If you take a sample after my death, it's called autopsy. Bio means life. Opsis means view. So let's take a view at the living kidney. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Do you remember the story of the normal kidney? versus nephrotic versus nephritic syndrome, normally there should be no protein in the urine and no blood in the urine. How about nephrotic syndrome? There is protein in the urine. How about nephritic syndrome? Itis means inflammation. The kidney is inflamed and shedding tears of blood. We have talked about all the subtypes of nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome in my playlist titled Nephrology. The nephritic syndromes include anything that ends in nephritis, such as acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, crescentric or rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, etc. Also, don't forget IgA nephropathy and Alport syndrome. So it is two itis and two A's. In nephritic syndrome, such as glomerulonephritis, lupus nephritis, etc., the kidney is inflamed and shedding tears of blood. But that's not the only thing. We have hematuria, we have oliguria, we have mild edema and proteinuria, we have jugular venous distension and hypertension, as well as high BUN and creatinine. So why should we biopsy the kidney? To diagnose the actual cause of kidney disease, sometimes it's very hard to make a diagnosis based on the clinical signs and symptoms and based on examining the urine. Sometimes we need an invasive procedure like kidney biopsy, especially in nephritic syndrome. Or to diagnose kidney cancer, whether the cancer started in the kidney or started in another organ and metastasized to the kidney. Be very careful if this is primary renal cell carcinoma because it's very vascular, which means the biopsy is dangerous because there is higher risk of bleeding. It requires a good doctor with experience, not a doofus with a stethoscope, and for sure not a freaking psychiatrist. Tell me, kidney, how did that make you feel? I felt eviscerated. Also, kidney biopsy can help us diagnose kidney transplant rejection. After I received a new kidney, my body, my immune system, started attacking the new kidney because the new kidney is foreign to me. And if you have watched my surgery high yields course on my website, I've told you about the different types of transplant rejection. We have hyperacute rejection, acute rejection, and chronic rejection. The only one that is treatable is acute rejection. Under the microscope, hyperacute rejection will show you that the kidney's vessels have diffuse thrombosis, which will lead to less oxygen coming to the kidney, ischemia, which will lead to death of the kidney, necrosis. What kind of necrosis? Fibrinoid necrosis, because of the immunological vascular disease. In acute rejection, there is inflammation, i.e. vasculitis, with dense interstitial lymphocytic infiltrates. So we see lymphocytes here. As for the chronic allograft nephropathy, which takes a long time, the graft vessels will have proliferation of their smooth muscles, as well as arteriolosclerosis. The parenchyma of the kidney will show atrophy. The interstitial tissue in the kidney will show fibrosis because it's chronic. How do you biopsy the kidney? In most cases, percutaneous biopsy. What does that mean? Through your skin. You're awake under anesthesia, lidocaine, which is topical anesthetic, not general anesthetics for the most part, and you're lying on your belly, i.e. in the prone position. The doctor will ask you, hey, breathe in and hold your breath. Why should I do that? So that the kidney is not moving because this is a delicate procedure. 
I do not want to injure your liver or your aorta or your spleen, etc. And this percutaneous kidney biopsy is usually guided by ultrasound, CT scan, or fluoroscopy. This is the first way of performing a kidney biopsy. The other way is the more invasive open biopsy. Now your abdomen is open, it's a big surgery. When not to perform kidney biopsy, what are the contraindications? If the patient has coagulopathy, which is pathology of coagulation, if my blood cannot clot, I am at high risk of bleeding, so we will not do it. Urological infections, why? The needle will spread the infections all over the body. If I have hydronephrosis, why? The kidney will spread all of that fluid all over the body, which can lead to infections. Or if I have an operable kidney tumor, if this kidney tumor is operable and you poke it with a needle, you might spread the tumor cells all over the body. So just wait until the surgeon removes the entire stinking tumor. When the surgeon removes the tumor, you can put it under the microscope and examine it all day long. Before the procedure, make sure that the patient does not have a coagulation defect, so you order CBC and coagulation profile. After the procedure, make sure that the patient is not bleeding anywhere, there is no hematuria, there is no internal bleeding, and there is no infection from your needle. How can I do this? Hematuria, look in the urine, urinalysis. As for internal bleeding, look at the hemoglobin and the hematocrit and compare them between before the procedure and after the procedure. A drop in hemoglobin and hematocrit might suggest bleeding. Infections, how can I rule this out? Patients, vital signs, is there a favor? Hypotension, tachycardia, etc. And look at the leukocyte count. Some complications include spread of infection, spread of hydronephrosis, spread of tumors, etc. And puncture of other organs like liver, aorta, intestine, or lungs. Quick side note, how do you treat hyperacute? You cannot treat hyperacute rejection. You can only prevent it by doing the matching before surgery, such as matching the ABO blood groups, the RH, the MHC, etc. How can we treat acute rejection? Immunosuppressive medications. How can we treat chronic? You cannot treat it. We can try immunosuppressives hoping that this is actually a misdiagnosed acute rejection. A failed rejection will require removal of the organ. Oh, by the way, did you know, if I am receiving a new kidney, the doctor is not going to remove one of my original kidneys and replace it with a new one. The doctor will just put the new kidney below an existing one, usually in the lower abdomen or pelvis. Do you want to know how the normal kidney functions? Download my renal physiology course. It will teach you about GFR, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, micturition reflex, and much more. If you want to learn more about urology topics, download my surgery high yields course. It will teach you about testicular torsion, acute epididymitis, urinary tract infections, acute obstructive pyelonephritis, which is a disaster, bacterial prostatitis, posterior urethral valves, ureteropelvic junction obstruction, hypospadias versus epispadias, low implantation of ureter, which is a very interesting phenomenon, kidney stones, and urological tumors. You can download all of my premium courses. I have more than 13 of them at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.